to, and you don't have to, I'm gonna challenge you to cash app or sew in to Ray. Um, I, I am gonna sew $50 into him and um, for him taking his time. He didn't ask for any money. He's not requiring any money. Uh, this is what I want to do to bless him for doing this. So those of you who will, if you if, if you don't or can't, don't worry about it. That's not a requirement to be up here. Um, but but I, I at least want to say thank you to him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sew into him and I ask him to, to send me his cash app and we'll make it available at the end. So I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Ray Rousen, uh, who will lead us in this time. This is about 45 minutes of training and then he'll do some question and answer so you can hang in as long as you can today. Um, I think it's gonna benefit you. All right, Ray. Thank you so much, Bishop. A pleasure to see everyone uh, this morning. Some faces I know and have met in some time. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Um, when Bishop gave this opportunity to be able uh, and asked me to speak, I was honored. Uh, I see several people up here that I know who are currently doing things with uh, social media. But across the board, uh, as you're aware of now, uh, this is for, I'm in Virginia, so this is our third, maybe fourth week uh, where we're dealing with it from the concept of no church. Uh, so at our church now, this for us is our fourth week tomorrow where we have to restrain church with no one there. But my phone started ringing because I started getting people asking the questions of how do we manage this season? Uh, for many churches, uh, this is unprecedented. Uh, for many churches, Closing their doors has been uh, trying to figure out how do they, in this moment, continue to have church. Uh, I grew up different. I grew up like this. If you're like me, uh, I grew up, and when the preacher would talk about Acts 1 and 8 and saying that after the Holy Ghost shall come, we shall have power to go out to Judea and Samaria and the earth. I get that admission all the time, and we would raise a, we would raise money to send to Africa or India. Uh, at that time, that's what the concept the ends of the earth men. Of course, today with social media, uh, with social media, uh, we're able to touch the world every time we post, every time we do things. Uh, I've been saying uh, to a lot of ministries, uh, if you're not currently now on social media, uh, whether that is some kind of streaming opportunity, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, again, right now, the concept of church has been redefined. Uh, there is the church. It used to be that when it came down to church, uh, we were streaming our church services out. Uh, now it has forced us to relook at what is broadcasting the message of God look like. Uh, and I've had many people and many churches uh, call and ask, uh, well, do I have to have certain equipment or do I have to have this or that? And one of the things that I've been sharing with them is something that my mentor, Hope uh, Pittman, shared with me. And that was this to make the best of what you have and do what you can do with what you have. So if you are not currently, uh, if you have the capabilities to do multiple camera angles, that's great. But I'll be honest with you, right now the goal is for people just to be able to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, the truth is right now where we are uh, in this pandemic that again, unproportioned, I've been doing research, we haven't seen this uh, since 1918. Uh, and so we're kind of redefining the new normal of what it looks like. Uh, I believe this. Uh, I believe that even when we're able to return back to our buildings, uh, the concept of how we have had, how we have always had churches change. Um, it used to be that, because here's the truth, we have been able now to do church. Now we're doing church online in an hour format. Whereas previously, like at my church, church was about two and a half hours. Uh, we've had to redefine how it looks. The goal is in every one of our ministries to be able to uh, take what we do, represent it, and then package it because there are people who are looking uh, for hope and encouragement during that time. Um, I'll start off also by saying this. Uh, I'm one of those people, I'm big on resources, so I probably name a lot of things, some things you may already have, other things I would encourage you to look at. Uh, the first I would say is what you're on Zoom. Um, at this point, a lot of people are posting their services. Here's one of the things that I have noticed. I've been working with uh, social media directors from different sectors and cross denominations. Uh, but what I've noticed is there are not a lot of pastors pastoring online. And I think that is major and critical. And here's why I say that. 
uh, it's one thing to post your service and even your live stream, but how are we engaging and how are we able to connect with the people who are watching us? And so Zoom is a great tool as we're doing this morning. I would encourage everyone, uh, the first thing is, you know the size of your church and your congregation and the people who follow you. And that would be to set times to make sure that your members can talk with you, your partners, whatever terminology you use. Uh, for me here, uh, it's been setting time frames where at our at my at my uh, local church, I'm the executive pastor, so I'm the pastor over. Um, I am pastoring uh, over the internet portion, and so I think that is one. Thing, and Pastor Braff, you bring a great point. Uh, is one thing to preach to the people, uh, but how do we pastor them? How do we find ways to continue to meet their needs? Uh, I think that one of the things that we have all seen the past few days is what bad leadership looks like every time I cut on CNN. And, and, and whether you, and, and I think a lot of that is through fear. I don't believe that this is a season for us to be afraid. I do think that we should uh, be cautious and continue to follow what they say. But I don't believe in the widespread fear that's being put out there from the concept of I serve a God and we serve a God who is greater than fear. And so how do we relate that to our congregants? How are we able to pastor them? I would say this one, uh, one, find a way to be able to reach them. Uh, what are the needs in your community? Uh, what are some resources that you can do? Uh, I know that there are several people and they're doing groceries and that's one of the things. It's toilet paper. Uh, something that is hard to find in your city. I've been able to do this locally and it just came from calling. And that is, uh, have you reached out to, have you reached out to uh, the local stores to find out where their shipments are? And are you able to coordinate your efforts to be able to secure those, like if I'm in Chesapeake, Virginia. In Chesapeake, Virginia, believe it or not, I, for whatever reason, tissue is like gold around here. I don't know why it just is. But what we started doing is uh, we did a grocery initiative where we gave out groceries and we found out the need was toilet paper. So then we began to look at, okay, how could we coordinate with the Dollar Generals and the Walgreens and other places to find out when they were, uh, when they were stocking? And this is how we leverage technology to that initiative. We're getting ready to do an initiative now where we've coordinated with some stores of course, because of regulations, you can only get so many per person. So we're sending staff to get it. And then through technology, we use up something called flock note. Uh, if, you, if you are texting to your congregation, uh, whatever platform you use, I introduce, I like to submit flock note. Flock note is free. You can text up to 40 people for free. There's a cost association to it. And as it grows, of course, the price goes right now. We're sending messages dollars a month. Uh, our previous form that we use uh, was costing us $400 a month. And what it was doing is we're paying $400 and we could only send out to them. They could not text back. With Flocknote, it gives you the opportunity. People can respond in that text and mass email. And you have all of that data when you log in together. So instead of having to look at multiple emails or multiple text messages, you can have it where you can send a message out to your partners or your members. They can respond back in that likeness, and then they're a you're able to communicate with them. Uh, the other thing I would say for those who are streaming, uh, if you're not, again, I would encourage you to please take the time to stream because what God has given you is still important in this season. Uh, even if it is as simple as taking your phone and going live, uh, I believe that God has given you a message to be able to help uh, others in this season, and our goal is to get it out. Uh, the other thing I would say is through flock note or whatever means or methods that you have is, is there a way that you have where people can make a spiritual decision while they are watching you live? Uh, to me, that is important. I know that we're giving out ways that people can give, and that's, and that's important because that helps to keep the church going. But I believe that as many ways as people can give money, that should be as many ways people can make a spiritual decision for God. And so one of the things that I would say is whether that is through an email address or whether that is through your website or whether that is through a text keyword, uh, creating a method 
where people can get to know Christ. Now, to, and, and, and please understand, I'm not necessarily talking about joining your church. Uh, you can do that as well. But is there a way where people can make spiritual decisions so that they're able to uh, connect with Christ and connect with you? I would say this. Uh, I would not leave it to just saying post a comment under here on your live. Because what we've noticed is there are a lot of people when it comes to that decision, uh, they send, they'll they send an inbox, uh, but it's the fear of everybody. Everybody does not feel comfortable typing in the comments, I want to get saved. Uh, so if you have another method or another way that people can make that spiritual decision, and then having somebody who within 24 hours can reach out to them uh, at the latest to provide that spiritual decision. So for the person who wants to get saved, is somebody walking them through the salvation process. Uh, I believe that especially for pastors in this season, uh, when in all possible, I would say this, if you have someone on your staff, if it is not you, who is uh, responding to record a video, it can be 30 seconds, it can be a minute, it doesn't have to be long. It's just acknowledging the fact that, hey, God bless you, thank you so much. You just made one of the biggest decisions you could make in life. And you walk them through what the spiritual, the next step process look as a Christian. Uh, the other thing I would say is when we talk about maximizing technology as well, is, is there a way for your church to offer everything that you would offer in the building online? So is there a way where if you normally have new partners meeting or new converts, whatever your terminology is, new members orientation? Have you developed an e-church concept where that everything that you would do in the physical building can be done online? And here's the reason why. As you're streaming and as you're broadcasting, one of the things that we're gonna we're discovering is the truth is when the church doors open, uh, there'll be some people who connect with you and your ministry that they find out in this season, uh, you're the voice that God is sending them to hear. Uh, there'll be some people who, because of physical location, are not able to maybe physically come to your church, uh, but they have the desire to connect with your church. And so is there a way where you can integrate everything that you're currently doing back into uh, that e-church concept so that your partner, and if I use the word partner, I know St. Paul, we use the term partner. So if I use the term partner, uh, it's because of that you may call it member or whatever. Is there a way that your partner can, in the lifeline of that, participate? Uh, it's as simple as this. This is going to sound weird. I have been doing FaceTime visits with the sick lately because people are still getting sick. People still need prayer. And so what we've been doing uh, here at my church is if you get sick, uh, I'm finding what method of communication can I speak with you on, to pray with you on. Because it's important that every member or partner know that their church is committed to them during this season. The truth is, as leaders, uh, I'm praying for each and every one of you because you're leading through crisis and you're having to display courage, even at times where within yourself, there are moments of weakness. Uh, you're still having to be courage and to be strong because there are so many other people who are looking to you for advice. And so my question or my, my admonishment would be to find that way through that technology. Uh, is it a Google Hangout? Uh, I will say this, uh, as you're developing your church's ministry, Again, here are resources. You may already have it. Google will provide free information for nonprofits. If you Google Google for nonprofits, you can get free email accounts with your domain information on it. So, for example, uh, if your information, it, whatever your church's name is, you can register that domain through Google. It takes them about a day. All you have to be able to do is fill the information out, attach a copy of your uh, 501c3, or if you're in corporate, whatever that paperwork is, and they will open up the Google Suite. What that would do is open up everything that Google has to you. Google Classrooms for Bible study. It'll open up Google Hangouts for Google. It will open up the Gmail uh, for email accounts. And then you're able to create an email with your church, if you don't already have it, with your church's email address. So it could be your name at whatever your church is. But what it does is it provides additional resources for you to be able to stay connected with your church and for your people to stay connected with you. Uh, and looking at my notes as well, um, I'm assuming 
everybody on the call has at least a Facebook page. Uh, I would like to encourage you also to look at creating a Facebook group. Here's the difference in that. Uh, Facebook page is like the front door of your house. When I drive up to your house, I'm able to see that you have your lawn manicured and you got the pretty cars out front. Uh, and the Facebook page is kind of where you give your general information to. Facebook page is the place where you post your group happenings. Hey, we're having prayer at noon or we're having this or that. Your Facebook group is different in that it creates that online community. Uh, Facebook group gives an online community. Uh, and here's what you hear some of the benefits. Uh, within your online community, you can go deeper into some stuff that you may not want to do on the public page. Uh, you can go deeper into Bible studies. And there's a way for people to connect uh, and to join. Right now, it is estimated that there are close to 2 billion people who have social media right now. Uh, if you are like me and you stream, we had to reconfigure what we're doing because within the last three weeks, it's been such an upsurge of people who are streaming on Sundays. Uh, our servers were crashing. And so that's a good problem. The benefit of the Facebook group is it allows you to take the message and you can create small groups, uh, talk groups where you can bring people in. And now it's not just that we're having Bible study, but we're having interactive Bible study. Uh, ways that people can connect and ask questions. Uh, I want to submit to you uh, that this is the perfect time if you have not already gotten into uh, Facebook or Instagram Live or YouTube uh, to do so. Uh, there is something, there's something that I mentioned to Bishop and I've shared with a few people I see on the call that I recognize. Uh, create a church YouTube page. Here's why. Here's what YouTube does. YouTube says this, the minute you get to a thousand subscribers and the minute you get 4,000 views, you get paid off of every commercial that plays before your video. And the question we're asked, what do you do with people who have purchased uh, like myself where I pay the fee to bypass the commercials because I don't want to see commercials. How do I get paid? Great question. They still count, even though you don't see it, they still count the fact that it's there as a watch. And so it's as simple as this within your online community, uh, putting your content out there. I will say this, when posting your YouTube, if you're posting a full service, uh, only post your message up there. Because unless you own the copyrights to the music, uh, you don't want to run into copyright claims. But as it relates to the online material, the preach word, put that up there and then use that during the week to push on your Facebook page uh, to be able to do it. Uh, one of the other things I would share with you, and I want to hear from you guys as well, uh, is within technology and ministry in today, uh, especially during this COVID season, uh, for as many people that have websites, I want to admonish you. You can go to the WHO, the World Health Organization, or the CDC, and update your websites uh, with whatever the current information is that the CDC or WHO was posting. Uh, because the truth is, uh, that will give your parishioners, we're in the process of update, updating that now with St. Paul, it'll give the opportunity for people who visit your sites, uh, even on your social media pages, to get that update. Here's what I learned it shows to your partners or your members that you care about their health. Uh, that you're simply saying, hey, here's the updated information as we have gotten it, and this is what we're providing to you. Uh, I'm pretty sure in most of your cities, uh, there are conference calls with the governors. I would encourage you to get on those calls. Here's what I've learned here in Virginia. Uh, there's a conference call that's happening every week here. And what I'm noticing is they are releasing information. They're kind of giving you the snapshot at what the governor is going to say at his next address. So here in Virginia, uh, Governor Northrum is doing an address every Monday. It's like a big announcement. Well, on yesterday, we did a call. And it's open. You have to sign up for it. But there's a place on that site where you can do it. But they're giving you kind of the sneak peek at what the governor is going to do 
which becomes helpful in planning how you map your church out. So this is also the time as well uh, to connect with your local government because again, you can use that information to help filter. Uh, when we talk about, when we're talking about uh, that concept of technology, technology is not just social media. Uh, here's a question that I have for you. Do you have your services available on conference call? So if there's somebody who is not on social, they're not on Facebook, they don't have Instagram, they don't have a YouTube channel, uh, are you making that same available, that message uh, available on a conference call where they can call in? Because the goal is to get the message out to everyone. Uh, and there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can do a recap of that message if you can do it. Uh, or you could turn around. And if you chose to, you could set it up where you, like for us, what we're doing is we start the conference call line at the same time that the service plays. And here's technology. All we're doing is putting a phone to a computer so they can hear it. But the goal is don't assume that everyone is going on social media. Uh, that's, a, that's something we learned our first week here. Uh, and ironically, what we learned was at our church, there were a lot of millennials who did not have uh, Facebook. It forced us to kind of relook at what we're doing. Uh, how can we make your message, of, how can we get it out in every means that we can, by telephone, uh, are we doing email recaps? Uh, are you sending something out or do you have staff that can send something out to your church during the week? Uh, this is the perfect time if you're not doing it where whether you have an iPhone or an Android, you can create your own video announcements. Something that you send out to your partners that allows them to stay engaged through the life of the ministry. Uh, because again, this is the new church for now. Until, until COVID is over, this is how we're church, and here's the truth. Once we get back, and I've seen the means that we're gonna have high church as soon as we come back, and I believe it, but for some people, there's still gonna be that fear of that distance, and even when they come back. And the truth is, uh, this is a great opportunity for you to launch or to continue to grow your e-church. Uh, and that's something I would really leave with you guys, considering how can we make this an e, how can we make our e-church something that sustains past this pandemic? Because the truth of the matter is, uh, there are people looking for great ministries, and yours is a great ministry. I would say develop that as an e-church that extends beyond this situation. Uh, and becoming intentional with your posting and with what you do so that it isn't just a giving people a snapshot into your church service, but including what the person watching would look, uh, what their experience looks like when you're broadcasting. Uh, if all you have is an iPhone, that's fine. Put the iPhone close. Don't put it far away. If, if what you have is one camera, that's great. Become engaged and interactive. And what I've learned is, is that people, we look for more theatrics than people want. People want great content. We want to present it. And so we'll add a lot of things that are great. But truthfully speaking, and I'm guilty of it as well, I want to add as much stuff as I can to it to engage them, which is good. People want great content. But what I've learned is people want, we're competing, and I hate to use the term, we're in competition with reality TV. Reality TV has changed the way TV format is done. And so it used to be that you could put your camera far away and talk to people, but people don't respond to that anymore. So if you're using one camera, that's great. Put it as close as you can. Let people know that, because what it does is it gives the perception, as I'm doing right now and as you're doing, that I'm engaged with you. And those things make a difference. Let me ask this, Pastor Bradford, can I open up if there's any questions before I move forward? Is that okay, sir? Yes, everybody's unmuted if they have a question. Anybody have a question? I have a question. Um, my name is Rosa. I'm calling from Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Winter Park. Um, regarding the Facebook group, um, is that tiered within the Facebook page itself, or is it separate? branch of Facebook. 
So, so within Facebook, you can search group, and here's what you can do. So through your Facebook page, uh, and I'm pulling it up now, uh, within your Facebook page, you can set that you want to do a group. You can go to your account. Uh, whoever manages your Facebook pages, uh, you can go to an account and you can create there's a set you click on setting create a group you can link that to your page and that for those people who choose uh to sign up to that group can do so from your page you can do that and then with your group uh typically with the group you can create questions or parameters for them to click before they join the group so you can set it up where it's your choice where anybody can join or you can create parameters like we have where in order to form the group for us is an acknowledgement so for us it is showing us that uh there, there are things that we're saying that we want you to do you understand that this is a safe place you're understanding that we don't condone you can set your parameters and they click join the beautiful thing about it is uh the beautiful thing about it is is that when it comes to your Facebook page, anybody can click on it and like it, and you really don't have any control over that. When it comes to your Facebook group, uh, you can police that a little better because it'll show you your list of members. And unfortunately, it happens, there are people who try to abuse that. You can remove them from the group or you have more control of what happens in the group. Okay, thank you. No, no, thank you, great question. Are there any other questions? Can I give you some resources then while we're thinking of questions? Go ahead, I'm sorry. What I like to do is this. Um, there, I like to provide some resources that are available uh, to you that are free that you can use to uh utilize with your online ministry uh the first of course is flock note as we mentioned that's f-l-o-c-k uh no N -O -C -E. and again that is a that is a mass text messaging and emailing system that is free up to the first 40 people the next thing is called audacity a-u-d-a-c-i-t-y what Audacity is, is free audio editing software. What we do is uh, you can record your message on your phone. Uh, and if you want it, let's say you want it to clean it up or edit things out. It is a free platform that allows you to be able to do audio editing so that you can uh, clean up whatever audio if you need to. To people who may do video editing or you mm -hmm. have people in your church who has who does video for you? There's software called DaVinci, D A V I N C I. DaVinci Resolve, R E S O L V E. That is a free video editing software. Uh, we use that to edit uh, Bishop's broadcast that you see go out. Uh, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, if you need to stream, so let's say you have a camera but you're looking for how to stream. There is software called OBS. It stands for Open Broadcast System. It is a free streaming and recording uh, platform. Here's the benefit of OBS. If you want to stream to multiple platforms at one time, OBS allows you to do that. So you can stream to YouTube and Facebook. Uh, you can add your lower thirds if you want to put your graphics into it. Uh, it allows you to do that, and that's free. That's a free software that allows you to do that. Uh, there's another software that is called, there's another company called the Church Online Platform. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, there, is there a way, because I saw this on another pastor's uh uh, Facebook, he was on the Facebook Live, and he had a, a totally different background, like a digital background behind him as he did his Bible study. How did how was he able to do that? Do you know how that's done? Yes, sir. So he did that through green screen. It's called Chroma Key. What is it called again? I'm sorry. 
chromatin. So basically, what you can do is, uh, and I, I wonder if you can do it in Zoom. Let me see if it'll let me do it. I'm, I'm on my iPad, so I'm not going to let me do it on my iPad. No, it won't. Uh, what it does is, uh, basically, he's standing in front of a green screen, or a color, we call it green screen, kind of like what you see in the news. And yeah. there's a picture that you can superimpose. So what you're able to do, do that through OBS as well, is through whatever software you're using, uh, you can choose change background. Uh, and I'll make sure that I leave my email address. Uh, let me give that now. It's Ray, R-A-Y, last name Rousen, R-O-U-S-O-N, at gmail.com. So if you have any questions, I can help walk you through that individually with whatever software you use. Uh, but yes, sir, that is possible. Yes, sir. And it's, and it's possible within platforms that I'm mentioning, so it doesn't cost you any money to do so. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Also, I was mentioning there's a, a church online platform which uh, Pastor Bradford put up a second ago. Um, that allows you to create an online streaming community where people can chat within it. So with church online platform, uh, it allows you to, you can have the Bible in there where they can follow the verse, they can chat. Here's what I love about church online platform. You can create it again, it's absolutely free, but you can create some of the things that we talked about as far as making a spiritual decision. When you finish streaming, <coughs> excuse me, when you finish streaming, it's gonna send you an email that tells you how many people uh, actively watched your broadcast, how many people requested prayer, how many people said they wanted to give their life, whatever parameters you set up, people can do that within that as well, and it'll track that for them. Uh, if you are like me, and you are doing a lot of things remotely, if you have a system, so let's say you're at home, and you're working from a system, dual system at home in church, you can download this free software called TeamViewer. TeamViewer is a remote application that allows you to, as long as the computer that you're going into is on, you can remote in. So for example, uh, when we start our broadcast every week, I'm doing that from the comfort of where I'm sitting right now in my house. I remote in a team viewer, I hit play, I go and cook breakfast, I hit stop, and nobody has, it allows you to work from home with what you have, you don't have to necessarily always go to the church. Uh, for those people who are interested in graphics, uh, there's something called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. If you don't already, if you're, uh, I operate in Canva, Poster My Wall, and Photoshop. It just depends on what I'm working on. Canva is free. PosterMyWall.com is free. Now, they have some things that are, you have to pay for. Some of those items are subscription only, but they also have a lot of free resources that you can click on if you're looking to do graphics. That's great if you're looking for like plug and play. It allows you to do a lot of plug and play things. They call it <clears throat> two other things, and then I'll yield to Pastor Bradford. Uh, one is I would say when you're sending stuff out, if you can look at bit.ly link. Dot, there's a bit.ly link, it's bit.ly.com. So, what it does is it allows you to take a web page, things of that nature. Here's why I like bit.ly bit.ly allows me the opportunity to track who clicked on what from where. So it gives me demographics. I'm a data guy. I want to know who's who's doing what. It gives me data so I know I'm not aimlessly doing it. And then finally, if you go to Google and search Google Analytics, uh, the website is actually marketingplatform.google.com. What that would do is this. If you have a website, if you currently have a website, uh, marketingplatform.google.com, allows you to see the analytics behind how many people have gone to your site, what keywords they have used to find your site, uh, how often uh, people are going, where they're going from. So it gives you the data to help you uh, and build that as well. Those are all free resources that are available with technology that can help you grow and expand and get the data you want uh, for your online ministries. Are there any other questions? 
Um, um, let me jump in and, and say a couple of things real quick. One of the reasons why, first of all, this is being hosted by Kingdom Fellowship uh, Network of Pastors, but it is welcome to any and everybody. We're going to be doing this every other Saturday um, at 11 o'clock. The next one is going to be hosted by Jeff Dennis out of Akron, and it's going to focus on the mental health of the leader in this time because we want to provide some healthy tools. And so the next one on April 18th will focus on the mental health of the spiritual leader and on, and on how the spiritual leader can help his or her church with their mental health in this season. Because the whole mental health piece is going to be huge. By that time, people are already in stir crazy. So that's going to that's gonna be important. The, the most important thing about today is, is that I felt it was important that you heard from someone who does it all the time. You know, social media and technology really is an is a art and a science and a craft like preaching. And Ray is one of the best out there. He, um, you know, we've now, you know, brought him on as our internet pastor and he's creating our virtual church and he's helping us and, and understand everything that he said. And, and I see Bishop Lewis Williams up here from Jacksonville, Pastor Sean Williams up here as well. And everything he said, for those of us who are going to be navigating how to manage paying the bills along with this season, for everything he said, the great thing that we can depend on is that most of it is either free or extremely manageable financially. And, it, and truthfully, for everybody, don't just, don't just listen to this presentation for where you are now. Listen to it for where you're going to need to be. Uh, I was talking to a guy yesterday. Um, and I, I won't mention his name, but, but, but he made an interesting statement. He said, it's interesting. We all should have been doing virtual discipleship groups before this. But now we're forced to do the virtual discipleship groups. And so, and so like, like good example, our Living Extraordinary groups, we're never going back to meetings. We're going to stay virtual. And we're going to only do quarterly gatherings. Because honestly, I can get more people to get on the Zoom than I can to call people together for a meeting. And it's just the reality of the game. Um, it's changed. And you can get mad if you want and speak in tongues and lay hands on your pews. But you better figure out how to manage this new day. And so a couple of things, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Ray. And I would, I would encourage you to ask questions. This is the first thing. Ray's asked for nothing. He's required nothing. We put no price tag on this. But if you will, would you sow into him for taking his time to do this? His cash app is, uh, his cash app is uh, dollar sign Ray Routson. And, and Napoleon has, 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 has typed it. Ray, R-A-Y, Routson, R-O-U-S-O-N. He's asked for nothing. And so this, is, this has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with giving to him. If you want to, if you don't or you don't have it, don't worry about it. Please don't feel no pressure because none of this is about that. But this brother took his time and he's a professional. And so if you all, those who will, so into him. I sold $50 into him. Because I appreciate the information. He's been my godsend in this season. I ain't even going to lie. He's been my godsend. And so, and so, pastors, what I would encourage you to do is that if you're open and interested in, in, in getting some of your people to talk to him, I want Ray to give you some kind of means of contact, and he'll reach out. And maybe we can create one next week, same time, just for your people, just for your social media people for, for the people like I'm, I'm like my son um, a pastor Clark Cheatham has three people up here you know th this is also a great way to introduce what you want done to people that maybe you've been wanting to get involved but they don't feel confident this is a great way to get people engaged and we'll do it again next week if you want for another hour if Ray's open uh, we'll do it again next week with, with your people on it because because the more people you get involved the more peak, the weight, the more this is going to help you. Um, and so, so if there are any questions, ask them now or type them. And, and I promise you, Ray is going to respond. So, so, so Ray, why don't you give people a contact information for you? Um, and for those who have questions, please don't hesitate. Please go ahead and ask now. 
Oh uh, yes, sir. I can be reached by email again. That's Ray Rousen at Gmail. My phone number is 757 510-7810. Again, that's 757-510-7810 is my cell phone number. Uh, again, you can call me anytime with questions. My passion is to see churches succeed in this season. Uh, before Corona, before Corona, it is estimated over 3,000 churches closed every year. And that was before churches had to shut down because they couldn't go into the building. That was them having two, three services a Sunday, three, over 3,000, 3,700 to be exact, uh, based off the information I saw this morning, were closing every year last year. Uh, I want to do everything that I can to help churches succeed in this season because the truth is, uh, the truth is when it comes to not just technology, but your different uh, platforms, uh, when it comes to those things, uh, there are ways that the church can continue to operate, not just in ministry, but also in means uh, so that it outlives the season that we're in. Uh, I'm saddened because the true reality is, uh, Bishop and I had a conversation some time ago, the true reality is every church who started that was operating before this hit, every church won't survive naked. And the saddens me uh, is just a true reality. And so my passion is anything I can, I hate seeing churches closed. Because here's the truth, clubs ain't closing. Just being honest. And so, you know, so anything that I can do and resource I want to do, because I want to see every church survive that can survive. Uh, because this is just a moment. And I would hate to see a mission uh, get reduced and lose itself because they couldn't handle the moment that we were in. A question, are you able to answer a, uh, a question about sound quality for your live stream? Okay, sure. What's your question? Yes, sir. Uh, I am currently trying to get uh, the sound from sounding mono, like dull, and more of a, the capture of the sound of the room. You, uh, it, it's different from in-house in the live stream. Uh, just trying to capture more of a, a spacious sound, you know, the sounds sure. unreal. Here's a question. Are you pre are you pre recording? Uh are you pre recording or are you recording uh let me ask this question. Are you recording from your church on Sunday or your broadcast right now? Yes, we're recording and okay, we're, we're going live and we're recording as well. Okay, so here's a question. Uh, I would suggest this and I saw uh Pastor Mitchell earlier, I don't know if he's still up here, uh, who's a great audio guy as well. Uh, I also like to give I'm his here. expertise as well. Yes, sir. Good to see you, sir. Good I would you. say, if possible, uh, are you able to create a direct feed from your board to your camera system? Yes, I, 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 I'm there. I'm, I'm coming out uh, from a from the channel that um, into from, into the camera back into the webcaster, um, but I still have that that dull mono sound. I also tried this week. Um, will be my, this Sunday will be the first time I put some current mics out to see if I it also brighten it up and, and bring a, a more open space. So I'm, I'm gonna try that this Sunday. The, the crowd mic will uh, not necessarily understand it and how to fix that. I would say definitely. That, uh, if you. I would say definitely that. And if you're able to put reverb, Pastor Mitchell, is there anything you would add as well, sir? Because I yield to your as well. Yeah, um, if, if it's um, if he's running a line out of his soundboard uh, to his camera system and it's mono, that's mean your system is running through mono. You sound like you're trying to get a stereo sound versus yeah. a mono yeah. sound. Yeah. So if your soundboard is not already running stereo, you can't just isolate that channel to run stereo. So you may want to look at changing the whole entire soundboard to run a stereo so you can have the right left so you get the fuller sound. Um, through the stream. Okay, understand. Thank you, Pastor. Any other Pastor, questions? Pastor Rousen, a uh, quick question for you. Uh, with uploading a pre recorded video onto Facebook, uh, what is the, how do you ensure that it, it goes live or, or it's a premiere instead of a watch party where you have to share it? Oh, so when you load it in, you can set it as premiere. Uh, and I'll use, Bishop, I'll use uh, Bishop's Tuesday message. So Sunday on Tuesdays right now are premieres. Uh, here's why I love premiere. 
Premier gives you all the hype of live. They're going to advertise it for you. They're going to put it on your page. You're going, you're premiered at this date and time. You can get the attention. You can get the attention uh, behind it where people will, you can share that. Uh, and it's just clicking on the settings. Uh, the difference is this. I say all of them are important. Uh, if I could, I'll kind of explain how I think when I do each. Uh, if I am posting a clip, a pre-clip of one of moment, Bishop's moments, I'm going to post that immediately. Uh, let's take Sunday on Tuesday, so you're uploading it. Set it as a premiere and let the attention and the buzz build around that. So people will know that at this time, this is going to come up if you're not going live. But then Thank encourage you. people to watch parties. Watch parties are great. And I'll use St. Paul, for example. Uh, Bishop, can I share how many times you've been viewed? May I have that permission, sir? Yeah, that's fine. So uh, Bishop's service went out Sunday. And I want to say after church, it had 3,500 views already. But when I looked at it and we did the numbers, it had so many shares and watch parties because what happens is that helps your message get out. So here's what I've learned. You go live or you premiere. You do a watch party. But everybody who watches your event, although I can't see that number, you just increase that reach. So I would encourage your partners or your members of those to still do. I would set it up as a premiere, but then still encourage those watching to also share and host watch parties. And and and, and let me throw this out just kind of as a piggyback on that. This is something I learned from Ray. Um, and I think I think my son answered the que asked the question. I've learned this talking to him and Alexis. The timing of when you play stuff is as important as what you place. And 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 so and so you need to be strategic about the best the best traffic times. And I'll let Ray speak to that. But but also identify ten or fifteen people in your congregation and intentionally have them to post and repost your stuff. Um, we are intentional in creating watch parties. And understand that right now, the views is all kind of an illusion because everything is magnified. You know, you, know, you know, we may see, you know, you talk about 3,500. Before this, we were probably averaging about 1,500, 2,000 of views a week. Now we're up to maybe seven, eight, thousand views and a lot of that is just inflated numbers i get that but i think that what everybody's got to be prepared for and i need y'all to hear this and uh, d d d d this is my words of wisdom there's going to be a reshuffling of membership once this is over people are people doing something real interesting um and and, and y'all need to hear this they are watching multiple services and they're going to be making some real decisions about where do they go when this is over with. Okay, ain't nothing you can do. They gonna watch Matthew Stevenson. They gonna watch whoever else. So don't even trip off that. But you want people in your region to at least take a good look at you. And so you need to target your marketing for your weekly broadcast to your region because you will be surprised. And that, Ray, that just hit me. So, because you will be surprised at where people, because there are churches not having church. And it ain't that you take your members. So don't, don't, it ain't you take your members. But people are going to start making decisions. And so if they come to you this Sunday and watch you, and you bless them, Andrews, then they come back next Sunday guess what they're going to probably start thinking when all of this is over? If they watch you five, six straight weeks, they're, they're going to show up to your church. And so you got to be thinking about how you, so I thought the question by, uh, by Pastor Evans was important, how you sound, because two months ago, our sound was so bad until I know we didn't keep people past the first five minutes. I know people's spears were gone at the first five. They didn't even get to my sermon. They didn't even get to my sermon. So all of that stuff worked. Your backdrop, everything, all of it worked to open? sell your product. 
and your product is Jesus, glass, but outside. you got to also understand you are offering. All right, you are offering okay. the best of who you are. Okay, so uh, so I'll turn right, it back you. over to Ray, and uh, whoever is talking, mute your phone, say to the love. Yes, <laughs> bitch. Bitch. Yes, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Rouson, I got another question. Hey, bitch. Yes, <laughs> Hey Bishop, can you? Yes. Can you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Well, listen, hey, thank, hey, thank you. Husband. All right. How are you, sir? Robinson, I got a question. Hey, listen. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting this call. I want to go back to something you about this premiere thing because you know I'm I'm internet challenged, so I had some somebody else on this call to to try to kind of help with this. I don't really understand what you mean by premiere. Is that a button that you press in Facebook that helps you do that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you when when a video is uploaded, uh, it gives you three options. It gives you a couple options. One is publish now, which is literally what that is. There's another button that says premiere, uh, right under it. If you hit premiere, it's going to give you. It will allow you to set the day and the time that you want that video to premiere. Ah, okay. Thank you and for that. I... Still, yes, sir. It'll still load it and process it, and then at that set time, it will release that video on your page. So you can promote it at that time to have people go uh, go to that time to watch it. Yes, sir. Okay, I, I got that. I appreciate that. Thanks so yes. much, here. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Yes, I have another question. I've got another question for you. Could a facilitator, could you send your phone number, your contact number again? Oh, sure. My phone number is 757 510 7810. And my email is R-A-Y Rousen, R O U S O N, at gmail.com. Hey, Rick, can I ask a question about the OBS stream? Yes, sir. Hey, okay. So this week I had actually went that route. Is there a size limit um, that you can post a video? We, we, we went live. The We did the pre-recorded live Wednesday. The first five minutes, it would, it would ran through and then it shut off on me. So I had to kind of go in and, and re-upload it uh, just going to the Facebook page. But uh, I, I did a little study and just did some of the research into it. It said that... Uh, uh, for the free version, it the size of the video that I uploaded, I had to actually uh, pay for. Uh, pay for uh, I'm sorry, cut off, sir. It. Say it again. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? You, I could. I'm sorry. It, it was saying that the video size is too large for to into the free the free version of it, so I had to kind of pay um, for a membership. Uh, for Man, refund your money back. And here's why I say that. Uh, I have worked with now. Uh, four different churches where we've done OBS, and I've actually been driving and I've been actually driving and recording them. And we've done now, I don't know how long your service was, but one church I'm working with out of Hampton, excuse me, their service is an hour and a half, and it's recording no issue. Okay. So please give me a call so we can walk through that. I just okay. have to personally set with. Uh, some ministries to, and used it, and it's doing an hour. I've seen the max at an hour and a half, and it's been no issues. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it, was, um, it, was just, it was just 50 minutes, and then uh, the I had even changed the the size of the video, the quality. I even downed it down some to make it. Oh, I'm gonna say we're recording it in uh, full HD, 19, uh, 1920 by 1080, and it didn't change. Yeah, give me a call, please, so we can walk through. I definitely will. Hey, uh, awesome. Yes, sir. So again, thank you for for uh, for being a facilitator and and, and uh, giving great knowledge. I, I got three um, of uh, the Bethel uh, family on, and uh, I say that because um, Bethel is a historic church, and and we're beginning uh, this new wave or phase of technology. And while they're on, I just kind of wanted you to, if you could, uh, give like a starting point. Uh, because there's a lot that, that was covered. Um, and uh, I, I think that if we're able to uh, bite down on some things, uh, 
a starting point, where would you suggest are the areas that needs to be started on if we're going to move in a virtual uh, in a virtual way or move into this technology era? Era. What are some things needed, um, and what are some starting points? Sure, I would say this, sir. Um, I would say, and if I, and if I'm getting the question wrong, please redirect me. Uh, you mean from a video standpoint or overall? Yeah, overall, uh, video, um, uh, video um, you know, media, marketing, sound, all, all of that. What, do you, what would you suggest would be the starting starting so, point to uh, attacking? Yes, yeah, so I would start by doing your streaming and your live video because right now people can't physically come to your building. Uh, you can, so it's almost like this. Uh, on Sundays, uh, you are streaming. Uh, I would re recommend to your staff Monday through Friday your building. So it may be that we're streaming today. It's tomorrow Sunday we're streaming, and then on Monday or during the week, what we're looking at is how can we now make sure uh, the website is updated or things of that nature. I wouldn't try to do everything at one time. I would make sure that if you had to choose a staple. My opinion right now this season, if, if I had to choose one out of all the stuff you mentioned, ready to do, what's the one thing I would do? I would say I would get on Facebook and I would get the message out there. Uh, and I would also say Instagram. Well, again, Facebook, Instagram, however, whatever your audience is on. I think some of it, too, is knowing your audience uh, to know what platform that they're on to make you include them. So that if you're saying that my audience so is on like Facebook, uh, do that. But again, don't forget the conference call. Like, you know your audience. Make sure you include them. But as Bishop said, make sure your reach extends beyond just your church. Let, so let, me, yes, let, me, let me throw this out real quick um, to piggyback on. Ray just said something that if everybody just caught it, you, you've just been given a strategy for not only maintaining sustainability, but growing yourself in this. Sunday, Sunday is what, Ray? You do what on Sunday? I stream on Sunday. But Monday through Friday, you're doing what? I'm building. You're building. And so I think that, I think that you know, and, and, and I'll be very transparent, you know, because I... I ain't the most famous guy in ministry, but you know, I you know, I got a little notoriety here and there, praise God, whatever. I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of hits on Instagram. I ain't no and listen, the only time I get hits is if I put a picture of Claude and my children and my grandchildren. Nobody really pays me any mind. That's just bottom line. Instagram is not my thing. Facebook, I'm a little better. But I started to control my ego with, 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 with people liking it. Because what I started to discover, if even if people wasn't liking it, they were viewing it. And sometimes I think you think you're not being effective because you don't have 10,000 views. Like, like, you know, like Jason Nelson can sing Boo Boo the Clown and get 10,000 views. I can, I can put a sermon clip on and get 100. But it doesn't mean that 10,000 people didn't scroll past me and see it. And so I think that the idea of building is important. But here's the other thing, knowing your audience. We stream every week, but we also do a conference call while we're streaming. So for my senior members that are not on social media, we do a conference call. And the, and the conference call is at the same time that we do the uh, the service, so they're actually hearing the service while we're streaming. And Pastor K, my executive pastors figured out how to do the conference call with the streaming. Some of you have older congregations; they're not going to be on Facebook. So why not put your service on conference call? Find a way to let them hear it if they can't see it because they're already used to the radio mentality. They're already used to, they were growing up, they didn't have a screen. They remember listening to the shows. So, so, so don't punish your church because you got an older church. Take advantage of that. 
you know, if your church is not is not technology savvy, and again, I sound much smarter than I am because I hang out with Ray. That's the other piece. Hang out with somebody smarter than you, and then let them do their thing, and you benefit from their expertise. And there are people in your church, there are young people, there are teenagers who know this stuff. And you need to open up to the people that, that can help you do it. And so, 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 so any, more, any more questions for Ray? I'm just kind of jumping in as an amen. Ray, any more, any, any more questions for Ray? Ask Mitchell, him can, now, I, can I ask something? Probably can help you. Hey, can I ask something? This uh, Mitchell. Um, Ray, great job. A uh, couple things on that streaming thing with the, um, the sound. They have a thing by iRig. It's called the iRig that you can connect to any uh, iPhone or tablet and, and connect it to your sound system, which will also give you a better sound quality for your streaming. Um, Ray did great. Can I, if I can add, uh, Ray, on, also on Facebook, if you have a group, you can go in and set a reminder that can constantly post on your page that your service times is starting before the service and then the premiere after the service. So I think that was great. And then Lastly, don't forget all of these other major streaming platforms, Christian Royal Media, Switcher Studios, giving you 30 days free trial before the payment comes in. That may be better, like Switcher Studios, if you don't have no cameras, but you got iPhones and iPads, you can have up to nine different video angles on Switcher Studio. Um, for, for the 31st, 30 days, it's free, and then one of their packages is like 50 bucks a month. So it's just a good way, in a way to, an innovative way to start. So I just wanted to add that to it, but you did a great job, Ray. This is good. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. And can I add, 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 and piggybacking off what he just said as well, um, with in Facebook, Facebook uh, does a lot of things more than what you see. You can set up what they call messenger bots. Uh, that's what I'm in the process of uh, preparing with St. Paul now. Here's what that'll do. It'll look through your live, and if somebody says something about salvation or faith, it'll automatically pop up, and it kind of is, is, is doing the work for you. Uh, I've seen a church do it, where if somebody puts, I want to be saved, or that's good, or whatever, you can put certain keywords that appoint them to your site or other things, so that it'll help you cultivate relationships with those people. Any other questions? Yes, this is Rosa again from Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. I wanted to know if someone, if we could get a recommendation of someone to assist us with creating a, um, a web page because currently we don't have one. Okay, sure. I mean, I can, I can, I'd be more than happy to speak with you. There may be other people as well who can do it. I'd be more than happy you can email me. Let me tell you some advice. Let me ask you a question. Is this something that you want to build and maintain, or is this something that you want to outsource? Um, I would prefer, and I'm not sure we have other people on the call, um, something that we could maintain. So sure. if I could sit with someone or a group of us could sit with someone and sure. just, just see how it's built and then. Sure. Then sure. Sure. No problem. You can feel, please feel free to email okay. me or call me. I'd love to set up a time as well as anybody else who's up there to do as well, uh, where we can uh, do a team viewer, where we can set it up, where we, I can log, you can log into my computer screen, and I kind of show you screen by screen how that process works. Oh, thank you. Ray, we, we, we're going we're gonna to bring, bring you to, uh, to the church to, to, do, yes, sir. to do a training. Yes, sir. So, so look out for it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe we were... I don't know how you can make all those parties fellowship or what. Are there any other questions? So you have to copy your video when you're going in. Pastor Bradford, Bishop Gunn, thank you so much for this opportunity. I uh, thank you to everyone who listened. I guess to me a lot of people got on. They don't know if I could never get back on. Oh. Who, who took the time to listen. I hope that there is something that was said that will help you uh, enhance technology for your ministry again. Uh, please feel free to email me or give me a call again. I'm so appreciative to uh, my KFI family and to Bishop uh, and to Pastor Bradford. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And, and listen, thank you. And again, um, if you've been blessed and helped by this, please don't hesitate to cash app him at at dollar sign Ray Rousen, R A Y R O U S O N, um, at, at Cash App Ray Rousen. Again, if it's a dollar, five dollars, it don't matter. 
whatever you send him, he will be appreciative. He did this out of relationship with, with us, with KFI, with, and so I'm grateful for him. Amazing guy, amazing spirit. Not a lot of guys at his level of this would even offer themselves um, to you um, uh, without charging. And the fact that he's just willing to be a resource to the body of Christ. So again, have, everybody have a great have a great weekend. Do your absolute best to implement this stuff, but more importantly, preach because people need to hear the word of God and continue to keep people encouraged. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And April 18th at 11 o'clock, we will have Dr. Jeffrey Dennis on dealing with uh, mental health. And so you guys be blessed and take care. And for all of the pastors, uh, we love you. Thank you for taking time to do this. Be blessed, guys. Listen, for those that are still on, if you shoot me an email, I just posted it in the chat. I can send you a link to this so you can have it um, and review it at your leisure. Pastor so, Napoleon, do you have the notes? I have the, I can, I think the chat comes with it. I got to figure out when it's, when it records, it records the chat. But what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll copy it right now and just uh, shoot it to you. Okay. All right. I'm about to have a conference call with my folk. Uh, so it'd be good to. Okay. To have. I'm about to just cop, cotton and paste everything, cotton and paste, cut and paste everything. And uh, <laughs> I'll inbox it to you. Okay, bro. I, I just sent it. I just sent you my email. We did. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks, bro. All right. Love you. You too, man.